Hey there! Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. The T-Biz Podcast delivers tea news that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Tea nourishes and inspires. It is an ancient plant-based medicine that simultaneously heals and energizes the body as it soothes the mind. Making fine tea is a blend of artistry and craftsmanship. The $200 billion tea trade is fundamentally local, yet exerts global influence, employing millions to enhance the well-being of all. Hello, everyone. Here are this week's headlines. CVC is exploring the sale of its Caraco Tea Gardens. Unilever brands are not on the block. Duncan will soon begin selling hard tea at select U.S. locations. A study using U.K. biobank data shows tea appears to lower the risk of gout. Plus, Phil Rushworth, one of the owners of Ottawa-based Zen Tea, loves adventure camping, canoeing, climbing, and hiking. This week, he describes teas and techniques to help Tea Biz listeners enjoy special moments in the great outdoors. More in a minute, but first, this important message. What makes a perfect cup of Ceylon tea? The perfect cup is from the tea businesses that ensure the protection of all the children living within their tea estates. We salute Kailani Valley, Telawakili, Bogawanthalawa, Harana, and Eliptia Tea Estates. Support Save the Children, Sri Lanka. CVC is exploring the sale of its Caraco Tea Gardens. Unilever brands are not on the block. The private equity group that paid 4.5 billion euros for Unilever's tea business in July 2022 is discussing the sale of the Kenyan gardens and factories supplying its popular tea brands, including Lipton Tea and Infusions, according to the Financial Times. The newspaper reports three sources with detailed knowledge of CVC Capital Partners' plans. The Caraco Plantation has a history of violence and sexual abuse allegations. Protests in recent months led to the death of one tea worker, the torching of several tea harvesting machines, theft of tea, and acts of vandalism. A Lipton spokesperson said the company had received a number of unsolicited inbound expressions of interest in its estates and would, quote, review this strategic question at the right point in time, end quote. The spokesman said that if CVC sold the plantation, it would retain the rest of the business, which processes and markets tea under several brands, including PG Tips, Brook Bond, and Pucka Herbs. In January, BBC Africa aired a documentary following an investigation of abuse involving more than 70 women allegedly forced into sex to get jobs on plantations owned by Unilever and James Finley and Company. Unilever said it was, quote, deeply shocked and saddened, end quote, by the behavior in the documentary. Kenyan authorities are investigating the allegations, which immediately led to the firing of several individuals, the barring of others from its facilities, and, quote, comprehensive support for any affected women on our estates, end quote, according to Lipton's spokesperson. Business Insight 
In May, Finley's announced the sale of its James Finley Kenya Limited Tea Gardens to Sri Lanka-based Brown's Investment. The nine Finley tea estates cover 10,300 hectares, including 5,200 hectares of land under tea. Terms of the sale were not disclosed. Headquartered in Colombo, Browns owns 49 Sri Lankan tea gardens spanning 30,000 hectares and employs more than 10,000 workers. In May, the U.S. Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau approved labeling for Duncan's Spiked, a new line of hard tea and coffee in cans and bottles that will soon be available at the company's popular coffee and donut shops. Beverage industry publication Vine Pear writes that a 5% ABV tea will be available in four coffee and tea variations. The Duncan Spiked website displays iced tea refreshers in four flavors, slightly sweet, strawberry dragon fruit, mango pineapple, and half and half, each in 12-ounce cans, along with original iced coffee, caramel iced coffee, mocha iced coffee, and vanilla iced coffee. The iced coffee versions are 6% ABV. There is a sign-up form to be alerted when these beverages are available, likely before fall. Massachusetts-based Duncan told Food and Wine, quote, Duncan's is brewing up something special and spiked for adult iced tea and coffee lovers. Duncan, founded in 1950, operates 13,200 restaurants in 42 global markets, with 9,461 in the U.S. It is the largest coffee and donut brand in the States. Business Insight Market leader Twisted Tea recently launched an 8% ABV extreme tea. Lipton and Arizona iced tea are now selling 5% hard teas, and Monster is expected to launch a hard tea soon. Ohio-based Wild Tea now offers 9% ABV black cherry bourbon barrel and strawberry pineapple flavors. For the first time, hard teas are leading the FMB, that's fermented malt beverage category in the U.S., resting the segment from hard lemonade. RTD cocktails are gaining market share as hard seltzers slip from a high of $4.3 billion in sales. Hard teas increased dollar sales by 38.7% to $385 million year-to-date, according to BevNet. Tea may reduce the risk of developing gout, according to a peer-reviewed analysis published in the July edition of the journal Frontiers in Genetics. Gout is a form of inflammatory arthritis leading to recurrent joint pain caused by the accumulation of needle-like uric acid crystals. It affects 1-2% to of adults in the developed world at some point in their lives and is becoming more common. As reported in HCP Live, quote, gout often impacts a patient's mental, physical, and emotional well-being. Treatment includes exercising, weight loss, limiting sugary drinks, and medication, end quote. Chinese researchers described a causal relationship between tea intake and gout based on a Mendelian randomization study of the UK Biobank. Three data sets each revealed that a greater intake of tea reduced gout, and a fourth statistical examination revealed those with low tea intake had a higher risk of gout. The data sets were drawn from the long-term biobank study of 500,000 volunteers aged 40 to 69, which began in 2006 and will continue for 30 years. Researchers speculate that, quote, tea flavonoids may inhibit xanthine oxidase, an enzyme involved in uric acid production. 
while another theory is that T flavonoids may improve uric acid excretion by the kidneys. However, since observational studies may have numerous confounding factors, large randomized controlled trials are required to determine the effects of tea intake on gout, end quote. Different types of tea, such as green tea, white tea, and black tea, may have distinct chemical constituents and may result in different effects on gout, according to researchers. But these findings, quote, underscore the potential advantages of increasing tea intake for preventing gout, end quote. Arvinda Anantharaman in Bengaluru reports on tea auction prices for sale 30. India Tea Price Report for sale 30, the week ending 29th July 2023. This week, there were 18,207 tons of tea on offer with a cumulative sale volume of 67% and an average price of 182 rupees a kilo. Uh, so about 2,876 tons sold for about 200 rupees a kilo. About 2,885 tons sold for just under 200 rupees a kilo. But the bulk of it, which is about 4,000 tons of CTC, sold for under 150 rupees a kilo. Overall, sale 30 was similar to the previous week. Kolkata continued to see good demand for orthodox tea, fetching an average price of 227 rupees a kilo. Darjeeling saw good demand, although prices fell by about 80 rupees from last week, although sale volumes improved this week. Guwahati saw good demand for both leaf and dust, similar to the last two weeks, where Hindustan Unilever was active for both tea grades and major blenders were active for dust. In the south, the overall sale volume was 58%, with average prices of 107 rupees a kilo. Kochi saw good demand for CTC leaf this week, and Kunur saw sale volumes of just above half. Nearly 90% of the tea on offer sold for under 100 rupees a kilo, and less than 1% sold for above 150 rupees a kilo. In weather, this light to moderate rain predicted in Darjeeling, Jalpaiguri, some rain likely in Assam as well. There's a deep depression in the Bay of Bengal, which is likely to cause heavy rainfall in parts of the northeast, but the state that's likeliest to be worst hit is Odisha. The IMD has also reported that August will see below normal rainfall across the country. And now, a word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Nish. I grew up in an organic tea farm and I founded Nepal Tea Collective in 2016. Tea is not just a beverage for me, but a catalyst for social change, sustainably empowering hardworking artisans like my parents for the past 30 years. I'm on a mission to make the whole world aware of the goodness of Nepali teas and the good that comes from supporting growers in this remarkable land. If you haven't tasted Nepali teas yet, you're missing out. Our award-winning teas are making headlines. Find out why. Visit Nepal Tea Collective's website to get a free sample of this extraordinary taste of the Himalayas. That's nepalteacollective.com. Or just send me an email at nish, N-I-S-H, at nepalteacollective.com. Cheers. Phil Rushworth, one of the owners of Ottawa-based Zen Tea, loves adventure camping, canoeing, climbing, and hiking. This week, he describes teas and techniques to help Tea Biz listeners enjoy special moments in the great outdoors. When studio executive Phil Rushworth married Zen Lu, he became part of an established Chinese tea family. His mother-in-law, Jian Li Wu, is a nationally certified tea art specialist, taster, and appraiser with more than 25 years of experience in the tea business. She has authored five books on tea. The couple live in Ottawa and visit China frequently. Phil has a background in science and engineering and brings his unique scientific perspective on the mechanism and chemistry of tea and its processing. Although a relative newcomer to Chinese tea, 
Bill explains that he has gradually come to understand the nuance in teas cherished in China. He describes his work as a bridge between science, intuition, and Western and Eastern culture. Phil, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate your coming on the Tea Biz podcast. It's a great opportunity to talk about the great outdoors with somebody who not only loves tea, but also loves adventure. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited that you invited me to be here. And I'm excited to talk about some of the adventures I've been on with tea, of course. The tea has sort of become part of my life, so I just bring it everywhere. But uh, I try to share it with folks. Some of the camping I do is is a bit more... Outback, and and of course, but what I say is going to apply to folks who, even if you're car camping or you're at the cottage or you're just somewhere in a beautiful setting with nature, tea is is intrinsically bound to nature. So it just seems natural to me to take it with me when I get out in nature. And when I get out in nature, I like to pu- push a little harder. I'm not I'm not some kind of frontiersman or or expert outdoorsman or anything like that. But I do enjoy paddling into the back country or maybe going on an extended hike on a, on a less travel. And there's really n- no better way to sort of cap off that experience than to bring along some, some delicious tea. There's a few ways to do it. You can go fancy and bring something really nice that can, that can cap off maybe an experience like the Bow Glacier Falls. We brought a really nice tea up to that, up to that waterfall, up to the top of the mountains that surround Lake O'Hara. We brought a really nice rock tea. And for those, for those kind of experiences, you'll want to prepare in a certain way. But I think I want to start off with something a little bit more simple for folks who are just getting into this. And that is, it, you don't have to go fancy, right? You can just bring a cake of shupua, a tough, a tough as nails tea. Recently, I was canoeing down the Madawaska, and my canoe partner and I, we 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 kind of we parked the canoe and we had a look at this rapid, and we decided, you know what, we can do it. Let's let's shoot that rapid. And to make a long story short, we we did pretty good coming into it. Zig this way, zag that way. We got chewed up and spit out on the last on the last ledge. It was about a two foot drop into the waves. We almost made it, but we we just took on too much water. Our friends on shore threw us a line, and we were pulled to safety. Our canoe drifted off a couple kilometers down river, and we were able to retrieve it later. But after a day like that, which is that was exciting, it was fun, but it's still tiring. It's a lot of energy, and and you're gonna get wet. With a with a tea like a like a cake of shupuar or a cake of shempuar or even white tea, a nice robust pressed tea. It doesn't weigh much. You don't need a big clunky container. You can literally just throw it in a Ziploc bag to keep it dry. That's pretty much the only thing you need to do is keep it dry, keep it out of the sunlight, and then when your when your camp is set up and the sun is setting, you can boil some water and kind of unwind from all the excitement and just kind of soak it in. Like it really enhances the experience. One thing I marvel at is the water in the great outdoors. When hiking in the mountains, you might see streams literally springing out from the rocks or discover a pool of high mountain ice melt. At night, catch basins filled our canteens with rainwater. I collected samples for tea on recent trips noting that the taste of water varies significantly at different altitudes on the mountain. The variety of water mirrors the terrar where tea grows. It's funny that you mention water, because we did the same exact thing when we were in the Rockies. We started collecting Nalgenes of water from various locations, right? And we brought those back. And we actually have a YouTube video on the result of our water tasting. We picked given tea. And we brewed that tea with the various waters we had collected from around the Rockies. And I think it is really interesting to see how the water, how the water plays in too. So, so that, that brings me kind of to some of those fancier locations. When, when you, sometimes when you go somewhere that's sort of a glacier, at, at those times it seemed, it seemed appropriate to us to let's bring a really nice tea and have a little setup. It's nice to have, 
those teas are fancy, so they need a little bit more care. I, lo- I love the puar or any sort of cake or really tough oolong, bald, bald oolong, pox or press tea. Those can be just, they're robust, tough as nails, throw them in your backpack, rigid container, totally optional. Just keep them dry, keep them out of the sun, you're good to go. We have a line of tea that we call, we call supreme tea. What does that mean? That means these are teas from the pristine terroir, let's say of Wui or from Yunnan, but they come from the, the perfect terroir. They're processed to the absolute pinnacle of perfection. And you're going to want to brew these teas as, as properly. You're going to want to bring out, really bring out the best. So for these teas, we will bring a travel guy one, right? And on our website, we've got a bunch of cute sets, which you can just kind of, you can purchase a tra- like a, a travel guy one. It's made to pack down the porcelain is kind of protect so it won't get smashed when you're, when you're hiking. Will you share with listeners some of the energy boosting and tranquility inducing aspects of tea outdoors? One of the things, too, that's interesting about tea and the outdoors is, and it's a subtle one, it's not just the function of the tea. And by that, I don't just mean to wet your whistle. That's, of course, the function of the water in the tea. But we have this concept of, in the West, especially, of cool drinks being refreshing in the summer. But in Asia, that that's not a thing. It's, it's warm drinks all the time. And I think a lot of Westerners would be surprised if you try a white tea, hot or cold, it doesn't matter, but even hot. The effect will be cooling on the body. That's the nature of green and, and white tea. Whereas the dark teas that I like in the evening are more, a little bit more warming. Black tea and dark tea have this warming effect because of the way they're processed. It's the way they affect the human body. So I would challenge folks who are, are skeptical about a hot drink being able to cool them off on a, on a hot day. Two things are going to happen if you try it, right? You're going to, if you have a hot drink as your mid, at your midday break, you are going to sweat. Do not be afraid. This is your body helping you cool off, right? That is one of the positive effects of hot tea. Second, after after the tea, if you continue to pay attention, just touch base with how your body feels after that, not only because of the sweat, but because of the effect, cooling effect of the tea. I love a hot jasmine green tea. I was cottaging with my sister and her family, and the kids were swimming off the dock at the lake, and I... I just brought my, my little camp stove down and I started to boil water in the middle of the day. And they're like, what are you doing? And I whipped up some, some jasmine green tea, hot, right on the, the, the dock there by the, by the water. And we just shared some jasmine green in the middle of the day. And it was really delightful and it has a summery, summery, fresh jasmine aroma. So one of the things I think about when I'm taking tea out the outback is, is what's the effect I'm going to be looking for? Am I thinking, is this going to be a hot, oppressive human environment. If so, I'm going to try and pick teas that will help me deal with humidity. So I'll think about these these kind of effects too when I'm when I'm picking a tea sometimes to go hiking or canoeing or, or just cottaging. One of the things that really appeals to me about tea is the energy boost I get in the afternoon from a high caffeine white tea. Yes. So I, I, you're right. You're right all on the right tracks, right? Like uh, whites. Whites are a great, a lot, a lot of folks uh, have that feeling that like the, the darker liquor teas are the are the heavier caffeine teas, but in, in fact it is. It's the whites, the greens. I find there's a few oolongs that really work for me as well oh, on two fronts. Right, they give me that nice caffeine boost. Uh, in particular, like Bayat Silan is a is a really nice roasty oolong. Um, I've given it the nickname croissant in a cup. So for a morning tea, it has that sort of tie in. You're you're, you're probably not going to have a croissant with you in the outback woods, but you can have a croissant in a cup. With a bit of oolong, it's going to give you a bit of a caffeine kick. It's also got a, the aroma itself is uplift is immediately uplifting while you wait for that caffeine to kick in and give you the boost. We've got uh, Gucci Zasun is a really nice green tea. It's actually an ancient tea garden that's gone feral, so it's like pseudo wild tea. It's no longer maintained bushes, but uh, the, the Gucci, our producer goes out and, and harvests these, these feral bushes and makes this wild green tea that has got a great, not only a great flavor, but a a nice little boost. In the morning, it's nice to have that. It's also nice to have one kind of midday, mid-afternoon when you get that little, that little lull at at around nap time (laughs) and uh, just to help keep you going. I'm fairly caffeine sensitive, but we end the night with a choupoir. I don't get a caffeine kick from it. I, I get more of a calming, you know, coming down, cap the day off. So, 
you can even use tea at the end of the day. Um, you know, you'll want to pay attention to how any tea affects you individually because every tea is different. Every person is different. If it works for you, great. And if, but be mindful that it doesn't, because it works for me, doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. Will you share some suggestions on preparing and storing the teas you carry outdoors? So for storage, like the cakes are obvious, right? You zip lock and throw it in your backpack. There's nothing, there's nothing going on there. And the trickiest part about that is when you're, when you're making camp and you throw, have to basically empty your backpack all over the place. You just want to make sure you tuck that under something if you're used to clear zip lock, because, uh, it will only take light. If the sun hits it, it's one, two minutes and the, the flavor is, you'll, you'll taste that, uh, and it won't be pleasant, uh, regardless of the tea. So keep it out of the light, keep it dry. But for the fancier teas, uh, you know, I think the Nalgene is a great idea if you're doing a cold brew or if you're just storing the leaf and you're going to add the water later. But Nalgenes are usually also about a liter. So there's quite a bit of empty volume since the leaf is just going to be, you know, covering the bottom of the, of the Nalgene, I would imagine. So our approach is we just have a variety of lightweight tins. We use, we have a bunch of tea tins kicking around. So we'll just, uh, we'll kind of load the tea tin either with the pre-measured amount of tea that we want for that outing, if it's a, maybe a shorter outing. But if we're on a bit of a longer haul, we might bring a, a bit of a larger tin and just have a bunch of tea. And we'll just, you know, we, we don't really advocate the use of scales and weights and measures when you're making tea. We, we we're, we're more of intuitive brewers. We try to on our YouTube channel when we show folks how to brew, we do provide the water temperature and the how many grams of tea, but we right away discourage people from fixating on that. Use the liquor color to tell you when that tea is ready. Intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast? Would you like to learn more from our global network of T-Biz journalists and tea experts? Remember to visit the T-Biz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week. Produced by Audavita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.